وعلیٰبین طاہرین المعصومین السلام علیکم برادر سسٹرس ان شاء اللہ دیز فیو ڈیز دیر آئی ایم ہیئر وتھ یو رائٹ ناؤ آئی ول جسٹ اسپیک اباؤٹ اے لل ویڈ اباؤٹ لئی لت القدر اینڈ دین گو ان ٹو دا سبجیکٹ دیٹ آئی وانٹ ٹو اسپیک اباؤٹ ان دا لاسٹ نائن ڈیز ان شاء اللہ Uh, so that these days of Laylatul Qadr can be used and utilized in the right way. Uh, understanding what it is and what it's about and what we and how to view it. What kind of attitude we should have on Laylatul Qadr is very important for Laylatul Qadr to become useful for us. One of the, attracti- uh, the attractive things about Laylatul Qadr one of the reasons why it's appealing for human beings and their nature and psychology is because of the fact that muqaddarat uh, our destinies and our fate is decided on that night and for that reason it becomes appealing to many people to come to this night to be a part of this night why because their destiny is being decided this night Now when we speak about destinies, when we speak about muqaddarat, it's not just, for example, the rizq that we get, the nourishment or the provisions that we get. Sometimes, you know, many people think that when we are speaking about taqdeer, it's like uh, the provisions we get, you know, how much we're going to get. It's not just about that, right? Or, for example, uh, what things are we going to get? When we look at uh, what is being decided on that night, everything that we will be exposed to and everything that we will interact with, every person we will interact with, every friend that you will meet and every enemy that you will make, every uh, situation that you're going to come across and every hardship that will befall on you and every happy time that you will uh, feel every happiness that you feel everyone and everything that happens on is decided on this night for the whole year the whole year goes and you see that everything that you're doing is being decided on this night and for us when we see that everything is being decided not just how much we get or how much risk we get how much money we'll get how much wealth we'll make that is only a part of it But since everything is being decided on this night, then there's a special attitude that we need to have towards this night as we enter it. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. My friends, when we are going through this year and you see yourself in different situations and you see yourself, for example, uh, meeting someone or uh, seeing a scene or an image, or visiting a place, or someone interacting with you. But if you see someone becoming jealous of you, these things are not coincidence. Nothing in life is a coincidence. There's no incidental or accidental uh, occurrence happening to us. There's nothing that's happening to us that's going to be accident. Oh, this is an accident that happened. No, everything is according to a design, according to a plan that is taking place. Whatever we are going to be doing, facing, or people that we are interacting with, you see, this, it is designed. It is put into, it is planned out and put into motion. It's set into motion. And we live through that. So when we look at our whole year as it goes by, That whole year that we live is a plan that has been made and we are put into motion. And when it's put into motion, there's nothing we can do to change it. There's nothing that we can do to change it. It's going to occur and it's going to happen the way it's supposed to happen. And all of that has been decided on Laylatul Qadr. That night, all of this is being decided. Now... When you look at the situation and you look at yourself in this situation that my whole year is being decided on this night, what should we be 
thinking and what should we be doing? This is something to ponder over. And let me just mention a few points so it can help us. And inshallah, uh, we make better use of Laylatul Qadr the way it should be made use of. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Everything, my friends, has a purpose behind it. If uh, sometimes what happens is that we look at something and we say it's an accident. This is the terminology that we use, but it's not an accident. It was put there for a reason. Every drop of water we drink has been purposed. And there's a reason for us drinking it. It was written down. They say that, you know, every uh, morsel of food, the name is written on it. Who's going to take it? Who's going to receive it? And hence, this is uh, the whole year we go through this. Now, when we look at that everything has been determined for us, then where is ikhtiyar? Where is free will and choice? You see, there is no complete free will. And obviously, there is no complete predetermination. This is a hadith we have from Imam Jafar al-Sadiq salam in which he says that لا تفيذ ولا جبر بل أمر بين الأمرين He said that there is no compulsion, there is no predetermination and there is no free will. Complete free will. There is no such thing like that. He said but the Amr, the issue is between these two. And the meaning of that is that, listen, there's a time where you have choice and there's a time where you don't have choice. The rest of the year that you're living, you see, there is no choice for you. There is no change that you can bring about. The only time that you can bring about a change in your destiny is Laylatul Qadr. So Laylatul Qadr is the night of free will and choice. That's the night where you choose what's going to happen the next of the year, the whole year. Some people make use of it and they ask for their destiny. Some people don't make use of it and when they don't ask, it's written for them. It's written for them. And when it's written, then it's done. Then after that, you cannot change it. This is something that when we look at it and see that, man, my whole life, my whole year is being planned out on this night. My whole, my whole year is being planned out on this night. So Allah, on one hand, that choice is given to us on the night of Qadr. On the night is given to us that we can make the choice. And after that, then when the plan, Allah puts everything into motion. He puts everyone's life in motion. He says, all right, you know what? What are you going to get? What should you get in this year? When Allah looks at it, yeah, it's not that every day he's thinking, okay, you know what, I'm going to give him this today. Right? You know, let him have this today. No. This planning is done on Laylatul Qadr. Allah is saying to a person, for example, he will look at a person and says, you know what, this person ha wanted to be good. In his heart, he is yearning to be good. So, Take some money away from him. Take some dunya away from him so he has the chance to become good. Allah says to someone that this person wants to be bad. So he tells the angels, give him some more wealth so he can go away. I don't want to see his face here. I give him some more money so he can go away. He'll have money, he'll go away from here. I don't want to see him. Right? This is how Allah is doing it. Now for some people, for example, he will come to them and say, you know what, this person, you know, he cried a lot in Muharram. You see how, how much he cried in Muharram? Right? Write down Karbala for him this year. Let him go to Karbala. Give him the tawfiq to go there. And this is done. It's done like that. Some people, Allah says, you know what, this person is yearning to come closer to me. Write down Hajj for him so he can come and make tawaf of my house. 
Hajj is written on Laylatul Qadr. Who's going to go for Hajj? The list is made on Laylatul Qadr. Who's going to go for Ziyarat? The list is made on Laylatul Qadr. This is where the list is made. Understand that everything that's being it's being written down there. You know, he's this. Now, whatever we yearn for, whatever we choose, is Allah. Allah is saying that yes, you're going to get that. You are going to get that what he has been and whatever you have done the past year, your next year is going to be based on that. Your next year is going to be based on that. So now when we look at ourselves on Laylatul Qadr, how do we look at ourselves? What should we do on Laylatul Qadr? What is our view of things? Again, I said I'll speak today and tomorrow about Laylatul Qadr so that when we approach Laylatul Qadr from tomorrow night, and inshallah on the 23rd night, we make use of this night and keep this in mind as you approach it and truly understand what it means. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. My friends, if your fate is being decided behind closed doors, if there's a board meeting happening right now, and they are deciding for you what is going to happen to you the next year. And everything that you will face and everything that you will get is being decided next year. And this is happening in, you know, in that door right there. Tell me, what would you do? Say, all right, you know, let them decide, let me go and sleep. Right. Or, or would you... Look at that door and come to that door and stand before that door all night asking for mercy and asking for grace. What attitude will we have? You know, yeah, let me put it in easy terms. Right? You apply for a bank loan. You need that loan in order to close the house. And they say, all right, you know, we're going to decide tonight. So you just wait around. Now, on that night, are we just, you know, and this is important for us. It's just a loan we are talking about. It's a for a mortgage. And you're trying to take a loan on. And then what do you say? Are you just going to relax or are you going to feel disturbed and anxious to see the result? What would be, what would be your reaction in that state? How would you feel? I mean, would you be like up all night trying to make sure that, you know what, making dua and Please, Allah, you know, help me get this loan. Do something. Change his heart. Make this happen. Understand this. This is just a loan. If your whole future is being decided, then anyone who sleeps that night is truly someone who's careless. I mean, you really have to be careless and completely negligent in order to go away. This is the reason ahya is recommended. When they say do ahya is recommended, what do you mean recommended? You would do ahya if you understand what Laylatul Qadr is. You will stand in front of that door and you will ask Allah, Allah have mercy on me. I want that. Have mercy on me. Do something in this regard. Allah I'm at your door. You would be worried. What is going to be written down? What's being written down there? Allah, please put this in for me. Help me with this. You see, you will be there waking up, worrying. What's going to happen to you? This is why ahya, meaning being awake on Laylatul Qadr, don't look at it. Oh, it's mustahab to stay awake. It's not, don't look at it as a mustahab thing. It's a good thing. You know, re recognize why you should be awake. Why you should be here? Because your destiny is being made there. Everything is being written down there. All of these things that happen, Allah puts everything together. Puts everything together and then your whole life, your whole year is being put together. And then He lets it go. And He live, lets you live that life. And you will live it exactly according to how Allah planned it. Now His planning doesn't mean that He has forced it on you. His planning means that he knows the choices you will make and he'll write it down. He knows the choices that you're making and he'll write it down and he says, this is the plan I'm making because these are the choices you're making and I know this, I have knowledge of you, what you're going to do and I'll write it down for you.
Not just you, but for everyone else in this world. He's writing it down. For 6 billion people, he's writing down what's going to happen to them, how they're going to interact, and he's making a plan for everyone. And now when he once makes the plan for everyone and everything, now he sets it in motion. He said, go. You know, it's like, for example, you put everything together, right, in order to make, for example, a software program. You put all these things together, and now you want to make it work. And then you see glitches happening, right? So you have to go and fix the glitches in order to make those glitches perfected so that it can work smoothly. Now what Allah does is that he puts the lives of 6 billion people plans it out and then after he plans out their lives puts it in motion now when it's set in motion now Allah is saying watch them it will go exactly how I planned it it will go exactly how I planned it and no one can change it no one can alter my plan once I put it in motion this is going to happen the way it is my friends why is it called Laylatul Qadr the night of power the reason it's called the night of power is because Allah is making a plan and he's putting it in motion and he's setting that in motion and that plan is going to be carried out the way Allah planned it so Allah is saying witness my power on this night how I planned for everyone and it's going to happen the way I planned it this is Allah's power this is Allah's power. That's why it says Laylatul Qadr is a, the night to witness the power of Allah. How powerful Allah is, He, he can make a plan for you. He can make a plan for everyone and it's going to go exactly how He planned it. Nothing is going to happen as a coincidence. Nothing is going to happen accidentally. Everything is pre-planned. Everything is put in motion. This is Laylatul Qadr, my friend. Recognize the power of Allah. Witness it on Laylatul Qadr. And when we recognize that, then you come forward to Allah and say, Allah, you are making the plan. You are making the plan. Yes, Allah. He says, all right, you know what? I can make the plan and I can put it in motion and you can't do anything about it. But you know what? What I'm going to do with my mercy and grace is that I'm going to give you a chance that you can write your own destiny. Come. I will not keep you outside the door waiting. I will open the door. Invite you inside. I'm inviting you inside. You sit on the table and you write your destiny. What do you want? Write it down. And I will make it for you. Write it down. What do you want? I will make it for you. My friends, that night is the night of choice. That night is the night of free will. When you are truly free will. You know. And it's a yearly thing. Yearly thing it happens. Once a year it comes. It's not every day. The reason Allah made it yearly. The wisdom behind why Allah made it yearly. Is to show his power. Otherwise you know what. It's easy to make a plan for a day. Right. When you plan your day. You say you know what. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Tell me, how many days that you have planned and it went according to your plan? Right. How many times have you planned just one day? Just eight hours in a day you planned out, you know what? I'm going from there to there, from there to there, there to there. And you'll see something happens and there's a wrench that's thrown in your plans. And it's broken, right? Something happens. And your plan is broken. You see, Imam Ali Islam had said, that I have, I recognized Allah, I believe in Allah because every time we make plans, our plans are broken. The fact that our plans are being broken shows that there is another power that has, has its own plan. Whenever your plan conflicts with Allah's plan, it's going to be broken. That's how you know Allah exists. That's how you know He has power. And this is the same way you see that we make a plan for one day, we can't even make it. And you see something happens. Right? I want to reach there at 9 o'clock, so I go there, I get a flat tire. <laughs> I'm late. It didn't go according to plan. You see, this is the power that we have. We make plans and they're broken. They don't go according to our plan. Now Allah is saying, look at my plan. I'm not making it every day. I will make it every year to show that I can make a year's plan. For everyone, and it's going to go according to my plan. This is my power. 
Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah is, has power. You see, this is how you know it. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Well, my friends, uh, on Laylatul Qadr, we stand between two things. Right? Laylatul Qadr, we stand between two things. We stand between our past and we stand between our future. You know, we stand, there's a past that we have and there's a future. Our whole year that went by, those accounts are being closed. Those accounts are being closed when you see that the whole year goes by. And now we are asking Allah for istighfar for our past. And we are making wishes for our future. We stand between these two things. You know, uh, the whole year went by, Laylatul Qadr comes, Allah is closing your accounts. Alright, you did this, you did this, now because of that I'm going to give you this. The next year is being planned for you. Two things. Very simple. Let me ask you a question. When is the Islamic New Year? Right. First of Muharram. First of Muharram, he said, right? No. Muharram is the beginning of the Hijri calendar. That's the Arab calendar. Nothing to do with Islam. Right? Uh, the Iranians have the Shamsi calendar. Americans have the Gregorian calendar. Everyone has their own day, own New Year's. The Islamic New Year's is Laylatul Qadr. The Islamic New Year's is Laylatul Qadr. The fiscal year of Islam where your accounts are being closed and the new year is standing, starting is Laylatul Qadr. That's why on New Year's Eve you're awake. <laughs> Other people when they have New Year's Eve they're awake for different reasons. Right? <laughs> They're awake for different reasons. They make their resolutions also on New Year's Eve. <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go this. They make all kinds of resolutions there. And we also have a New Year's Eve where we are awake on that night. But for different reasons. Our accounts are being closed. So we are asking Allah, Allah forgive me for that. When you do the amal of Laylatul Qadr, you see there's istighfar. You know, astaghfirullah rabbi about 300 times, do this, this, that. What is that for? That is to close the accounts for the last year. And then there are those duas that are meant for the future. Allah, these are the duas I have for the future. These are the duas I have for the future. You are standing between your past and your future on Laylatul Qadr. This is where you stand. What are you worried about? What are you worried about on Laylatul Qadr? How much risk you will have, how much money you will get, how much wealth you have. Are these the worries that we have truly? One of the things that's written on Laylatul Qadr is our death. All the people who are going to die on Laylatul Qadr, their names are written out in a list and put on the notice board and said, these are the people who will die this year. Their death is coming. Are we worried about Real things or are we worried about uh, things that do not have that much meaning? What are we worried about on Laylatul Qadr? I will explain more about this tomorrow. Let me just give a few examples and we'll end today. On Laylatul Qadr, my friends, when we are standing before Allah and our destiny is being decided, what's in our mind? See, this is the attitude I'm talking about. When you want to have an attitude towards What's happening? I want you to see this. Laylatul Qadr, what kind of attitude do we have? What are we worried about on Laylatul Qadr? Are we worried about our akhirat? Are we worried about our death? Our, are we worried about our meeting with Allah? What are we worried about on Laylatul Qadr? You know, to give you a sense of this, um, Ruqayya was the niece of Khatija, the wife of the Prophet. You know, uh, Khatija had three nieces who were orphans that she raised in her house. And those nieces, 
they came to be known as the daughters of the prophet because they were raised. They are not actually the daughters of the prophet, but they were the niece of Khatija that she raised in her house because her sister had died and she raised them and they were raised in the house of the prophet. So when Ruqayya died, when Ruqayya died, Fatima was also there. And uh, when she was buried in her grave and Fatima obviously this is like a sister to her she was raised in the same house and so she was disturbed emotional she was crying Rasulullah and Fatima are standing on the grave of Ruqayya and Rasulullah he tells Fatima that Fatima don't cry you know at first he uh, wipes her tears with his Abba so that they don't fall on the ground. And then he tells her that I have made dua to Allah because I know my daughter would not be able to bear the crushing of the grave. So I have made a dua to Allah that Allah take it easy on her on the grave. Imagine the situation. Fatima and Rasulullah are praying for their daughter that Allah take it easy on this grave. Have we done something in our life? Have we done something in our life that we can expect Imam Zamana to come and make that dua for us? Allah take it easy on him. He has done a lot for us. What have we done for Imam? Look at it. This is something that we need to... Are we worried about it? Is that our worry? That Imam, that what have I done? That you can say that yes, he is, he is like my son. Take care of him, Allah. Take care of him. That he can make dua for us. Right? Sa'ad ibn Ma'az was a companion of the Prophet. Uh, his situation was that in the last battle of the Prophet, he... Uh, fell injured and he was wounded and um, it was a wound an injury that w was uh, fateful it, it was a, he was at his end Rasulullah came up to him to his bedside and made a dua there for him and said that that Allah Make him conscious again. And Saad became conscious and he opened his eyes. He saw Rasulullah. He saw Rasulullah. And you know what? In that situation, there were tears in his eyes as he saw Rasulullah. And he made a dua on his. This is a deathbed. He made a dua there that Allah, if this is the last battle that your messenger is going to be in, then make me shaheed so I can die as a martyr. But if this is not the last battle that he's going to go into another battle, Allah give me life again so I want to defend him. And when Rasulullah heard this dua, he made his own statement before Allah and said, Allah be a witness that I am razi and content with him. I'm satisfied with him. I'm happy with him. This is Saad ibn Ma'az. I'm satisfied. I'm happy with him. And you know what? When we looked at this, he said that if anything happens to him, let me know. He went back. And then the news came to him that Saad, that Saad passed away. When he heard the news that Saad passed away, he was so frantic in his emotions that he was running. He ran. To see him. He ran to see him. Right? And he went there. Prayed for him. Gave him ghusl and everything. Buried him in the ground. After he buried him in the ground. And he was standing there. As he was standing on top of his grave. You know what he said? He said at one point he said Subhanallah. And then he said Allahu Akbar. So the companions who were there. They thought you know this is mustahab to say. So they asked Rasulullah, is this mustahab to say? He said, no, this is not. He said, then why did you say it? 
He says, because when I, when we put him in the ground, when we put Saad in the ground, the grave crushed on him in such a way that if it wasn't for Saad, anyone else would be destroyed. It crushed him in that way. And then after it crushed him because of Saad and because of how good he was, it released him. It released him. Imagine this. So when it crushed him, I said, Subhanallah. When it released, I said, Allahu Akbar. And so this is Saad ibn Ma'az about whom Rasulullah said that I am Radhi and I am happy with him. Imagine what our situation is. Are we worried about that? What is our worry on Laylatul Qadr? My friends, Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Come forward, brother. come forward. What is our worry on Laylatul Qadr? Truly understand ourselves. What are, what are we worried about on Laylatul Qadr? Imam Ali alayhi salam, when he, when he buried Fatima, he put his cheek, he was crying so much, he put his cheek on the grave of Fatima and he told the grave, grave, take easy, take it easy on this amanat that I have put inside of you. This is the amanat of Rasulullah. Imam Ali, he cried a lot for Fatima. He missed Fatima a lot. Fatima meant so much. We don't, you see, it wasn't an emotion. It was a reality. How much Imam Ali missed Fatima. My friends, in Kufa, on the 19th of Ramadan, just go through this, inshallah. Just, I want you to understand the relationship that Ali had with Fatima. Imam Ali, when he went to the house of Zainab for this night, and he was spending this night, every night he used to spend with one of his children, and this night he went to Zainab's house, and he went to Zainab's house, and Zainab saw Imam Ali. Imam Ali is not the way he used to be. Now he, through the hardships that he had gone through, his age has become visible on his face. The age has become visible on his face. Zainab looks at Ali, his her father, and says, Father, you look worried. You look anxious. Ali said, I don't know about this night. This night <laughs> is ominous night. It's a very ominous night this night. Imam Ali started to pray. <laughs> he started to make his prayers. And when he started making his prayers, after a while when he prayed, he was weak. And so he, as he stopped his prayer, Zainab brought some food for him. What food was Imam Ali going to eat? What did he eat anyway of this dunya? <laughs> he, she brought some milk and she brought a bread or dates or salt and she put it in front of him Imam Ali looked at the food and he started shaking and he started crying he said Zainab looked at him and said why are you crying father you're weak today I brought you some food so you can eat he said Zainab have you ever seen me eat more than one thing at a time why do you have two things in front of me I shake with fear. He didn't drink the milk that Zainab gave, but you know what milk he drank? Those yatim and those orphans that Ali used to take care of when they heard that Ali was sick, they brought some milk for him. Imam Ali took that milk because he didn't want to break their hearts. He didn't want to break their hearts. Ali, you drink the milk of your tea because you don't want to break their hearts. <laughs> Imam Ali, after that, <laughs> after he had there's some food, he went to sleep. It wasn't usual for Imam Ali to sleep, but on this day, he was particularly weak. So he went to sleep to get some rest so he can pray more when he wakes up. When he went to sleep, in the sleep, I don't know what happened, but it said that Imam Ali, he woke up in such a way that he was anxious and there was worry in his face. He was walking around. Zainab looked at him and said, Father, what is the matter? Why are you worried? Why are you crying? He said, 
I saw the Prophet in my dream and he's asking me, Ali, come to me. These people have given you enough hardships. Come to me, Ali. Now you deserve, I want you to come to me. In that situation, Ali left the house. Zainab became worried. And when Imam Ali left the house, there were some ducks outside which used to meet Imam Ali every day. But this year, this day, they were acting up and they were quacking so hard. Ali looked at them and said, you know what is going to happen to me today. No one else knows this but you. You know what's going to happen to me. Imam Ali went to the masjid. He made the azan. And after he made the azan, my friends, you know, you you heard the history many times but let me just say it in brief so that inshallah you can give your condolences to the imam of your time give your condolences to imam is zamana so that he is also crying with you Imam Ali went to the masjid, gave the azan, then started waking up the people. He came across one person who was sleeping on his stomach. He woke him up and he saw that this person, he's sleeping on his stomach. He told him, it's not good to sleep on your stomach. The person looked up at him. Imam Ali said, I know what you're going to do. I know what you're going to do. I've been told about this. And I know what you're going to do. But I'm not going to do anything to you because you haven't done it. And then Imam Ali goes and starts his Mustahab Nawafil prayer for Fajr. And as he's making the prayer and he goes into Sajda, this is when Ibn Muljim got up and started running towards Imam Ali with his poisonous sword. The sword that was poisoned. And he went to Imam Ali. When Imam Ali was in Sajda, that was the time that he struck Imam Ali on the head. You know, my friends, uh, let me tell you, whenever two bodies, whenever two things collide with each other, the impact of the collision, how hard it is, how intense it is, depends on which direction they were traveling. If two cars, if they are traveling in the same direction and they get into an accident, you see the impact of the collision is not that hard. But when two things are going opposite each other, then you see the impact of that collision is very hard. You see, this is what happened to Imam Ali. Imam Ali was coming up from Sajda, the sword was coming down on his head. <laughs> It hit him in such a way that it went into his head and knocked his head on the ground. <laughs> the blood started gushing out of Imam Ali's head. Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain came to his side. Imam Hassan took his head, put it on his lap and was crying over his head. Imam Hussain was crying at his feet, holding his feet in his lap. Imam Ali looked at Hassan and said, Hassan, don't cry for me, Hassan, because you will also... I see you and I see your face will turn yellow with the poison that will be given to you. And liver will be coughed out of your mouth. Hussain was crying at his feet. He said, Hussain, don't cry for me, Hussain. Because it's not far from here that you will be left alone. And you will be lying on the plains. And you will be left for dead. Just one last thing and inshallah may Allah bless you all. May Allah give you ajr. My friends, this is Imam Ali. He has been hit today. His, he has been struck today and he is in, he is in pain today. And the family of uh, Ali and the Ahlul Bayt are in pain today. And now when Imam Ali, they take Imam Ali and they are taking him towards the house. This is Ali, the same person who was the champion of Islam, who conquered everything. But at the last stage of his life, he is giving this message that you looked at that Ali who took out the door of Khaybar now look at this Ali who cannot even walk today <laughs> take this lesson from me so you know what you need to worry about <laughs> Imam Ali was being taken there and he told Imam Hassan that Hassan tell these people to go away tell these people to go away from here let them not come to our house uh, Imam Hassan told them some of the companions said Mola how can we leave you <laughs> I'm here al mu'mineen How can we leave you? You're in this train. He says, no, go away. Imam Hassan said, Mawla, my father, Muhammad Hanafiya said, my father, why should we tell them to go away? He said to Muhammad Hanafiya, he said, listen, when they will come close to my house, then my Zainab and my daughter will see me in this situation and she will not control her cries and she will cry for me. She will start mourning for me. She will be crying aloud. 
I don't want these people to hear her voice and to hear what she is saying. Mawla, Amir al Mu'minin, Ya Ali, what can I say? This is the same Kufa that Zainab is going to be dragged as a prisoner. That Zainab will be taken as a prisoner of war. And people will be throwing stones at her. Give us the tawfiq to be on the right path. Give us the wisdom to understand your guidance. Hasten our Make us a helper when he comes. Ya Hussain. <sighs>